It has been over two years and 12,000 ocean sailing miles since we last lifted Florence out of the water for boat maintenance. With a further 2,000 miles of difficult offshore sailing between us and the next suitable boatyard in South Africa, it can't wait any longer. Boatyards are where sailing dreams can be made, but also where they can be broken. There's always that overriding fear of finding something unexpected and difficult to fix, meaning you're suddenly stuck in the boatyard, unable to leave. I, I'll be honest, uh, it's stressing me out at the moment. I'm pretty, pretty scared about that. We are Matt and Amy. We've been living aboard and sailing around the world for five years now on our 37-foot sailboat, Florence. If it wasn't for the joy that we get from sailing Florence, there is no way that we would put up with the work, expense and hard graft required to own and maintain her. The worst part of boat ownership is when it comes time to haul her out of the water and perform all the maintenance tasks. You never know what exactly you're going to find needs doing, but it's always expensive and stressful. Yeah, we're finally taking Florence into the boatyard going to be the first time that we've lifted Florence out of the water in over two years and it's a bit hard to be sad about having to go into the yard because boat yards are not much fun but when we've got such a fantastic sail to get there it's only five miles and it's upwind uh, but it's an absolutely gorgeous day and a great reminder of why we love this boat. Yeah that major reason we love Florence is because she sails so well she will go upwind whereas a lot of other cruising boats struggle to go upwind so we can just enjoy this five mile jaunt around the corner whereas uh, catamarans for example would definitely be motoring up here If we knew how much our arms would be aching with all the sanding, grinding, polishing and painting to come, perhaps it would have been more sensible to motor. But we are a pair of self-confessed sailing addicts, so that was never an option. Because we are zigzagging upwind, we have to sail nearly 10 miles through the water to move Florence just 5 miles along the coast. But it's fun. With our sailing addiction satisfied for now, we dropped the mainsail and headed in through the reef under Genoa. Although there are three boatyards in Seychelles, there's only one that had available space and would allow us to live on board during our time out of the water. The next few days are going to burn enough cash without having to pay for additional accommodation. As you come into my place in front of the basin where, where my travel lift operates, the pontoon on your right, it's all empty there. You can put it anywhere along there, just put it sideways and you can spend the night there. And then uh, once we're ready by uh, 10 o'clock, we'll uh, get you to come in front of the, 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 the basin for us to haul you out. Cheers. Is that what he said? To the right, yeah? He said to the right, it's all empty there. A little bit nervous about this. This is going to be the first time that we've been alongside a dock in over two years, the last time was in Thailand, where we were in Indonesia, there just weren't any marinas. 
because we're living at anchor and yeah it's one of the things that's quite stressful about owning a boat is bringing it alongside a dock not crashing we've got the wind blowing us on which would be it'll be really easy to go alongside here port side too and just get drifted in by the wind um, but then it's going to make our lives really difficult to get off again because of the way the prop walk takes the stern of Florence it'll be difficult to get off the dock again in the morning so we're going to try and spin round and go in starboard side too Florence doesn't reverse in a straight line because of the way her skeg and uh, keel configuration are so it just makes this a little bit more tricky than if we had a kind of modern spade rudder type boat or one of those catamarans we were dissing earlier all boats are a compromise Well, that was actually a lot easier getting in here than I thought it would be. The wind kind of cooperated and it gently blew us onto the dock. It's not bad for the first time in two years. The next morning we're able to use a simple stern spring to get us off the dock. Okay. Yeah. But reversing into the bay for the travel lift was another matter. If we go into the lift forwards, the forestay would hit the lift, so we have to reverse in and remove our backstay. This is a much tighter spot, and without the wind helping us, it required the guys from the yard to help pull us into the dock by a couple of long ropes. It is crucial that the slings lifting Florence are put in the right place so that they support the boat, but don't put pressure on the propeller shaft and bend or break it. A friend had the slings catch on his sail drive here recently, so we are being very careful. It never gets any easier seeing your boat being lifted out of the water. Doesn't matter how many times you've done this, it never gets any easier. This is the most nerve wracking thing I think for a sailor. There's so many things that could go wrong. I know these guys do this every single day, uh, but that's our home up there, sat in those slings. It's already lining up. How are you doing? Yeah, okay. It's always stressful having the boat lifted out of the water. But yeah, I think we're good. Hopefully they chock her right, we'll be all good. quick look and see if there are any barnacles on the hole that I can quickly just flick off. So when they pressure wash the barnacles tend to cling on so it's best to get them off first. We learned that lesson the hard way because in New Zealand I spent three solid days scraping at the hole trying to get off the barnacle bases. The hole's nowhere near as bad as what we thought it was going to be in terms of growth. There's barely any barnacles now out of the water, access to Florence is a little more difficult. We're going to be making hundreds of trips up and down this ladder over the next 10 days. Don't worry, we did tie it on. After two years, we have a long list of work to do whilst we're out of the water. And time is money in a place like this, so everything is a rush. Jobs to be done. Pressure wash off the hull. Sand back the hull and prepare for new antifoul. Sand back and prepare the blue stripes for repainting. Grind out, dry out and fill the osmosis on the rudder. Grind out and repair the gel coat on the bow and the stern. Two coats of primer on the hull, four coats of anti-foul on the hull, two coats of two-pack paint on the blue stripes. Sand back and prepare the dinghy for painting inside and out. Two coats of two-pack paint on the dinghy. Replace the dinghy hatches, bumper strip and lines. Remove and replace the propeller shaft seal. Remove and replace the main engine mounts. De-rust and paint the engine bearers. Realign the main engine. Disassemble, clean and reassemble all seacocks. Clean and remark the anchor chain. Scrub, polish and grease the feathering propeller. Check the rudder bearings. Clean and polish the top sides and replace the house battery bank. All in 10 days. Pressure wash has taken off all of the loose paint. So now the surface of the hull is actually um, worse than we thought. 
and we've got all of these little dimples so we've got to get this smoother i'm going to go around this morning with a scraper um, and i've already started yesterday just getting the worst bits off we've looked in all of the diy and paint stores but we can't find any protective gear so um, we're gonna have to go island style good old t-shirt and a dive mask We've got a broken engine mount on the back of the engine so the only way to get to the back of the engine is to take the life raft locker out which normally sits here so we can get all the way down reach the back of the engine and also whilst we're in here we're going to replace the prop shaft seal which is uh, the bit that stops all the water coming in up the prop shaft tunnel the engine mounts are up under here it's not actually easy to get to from here nothing's easy to get to on on a boat and that's the prop shaft seal here on my heel. So we managed to get the parts in, they got shipped in, only took three days via DHL and FedEx which is pretty quick to an island in the middle of the Indian Ocean, um, but then it took us about another two weeks to get them into our hands out through customs, just lots of paperwork. I think I had 39 pieces of paper in my hand for two parcels at one point, uh, but we've done that and we're now in the boatyard and we're now starting to take things apart, but we just had a phone call from the engineer who was going to come and help us because uh, I'm not confident to realign this engine myself, it's pretty critical. Um, and he's ill with heavy flu, so I don't know, we're going to have to try and find someone else. Yeah, it's never easy. I need to give you a bit of an update because uh, we haven't actually picked a camera up for the last three days because we have just been absolutely covered in blue dust from our antifoul and from uh, the paint line of um, the top sides of Florence so <laughs> I've had about three showers and I'm still covered in like a faint blue tinge um, but we think we are now finished with the sanding of the hull and ready for painting. Matt's ground out all of the blisters which are, were appearing on the rudder we knew that the rudder was full of water so that's had some time to dry out and um, he's also ground out a couple of gel coat repairs that we needed both on the bow and on the stern so the plan for today is to wash the entire boat off and get rid of all of the rust stains which are on the top sides and then finally hopefully this afternoon we'll be able to get a first coat of blue paint onto the top sides and also the boot top line so that's the line that runs alongside the anti foul just at the at the water line i really wish that i could say that we have totally finished sanding but we haven't because i've only just started on the dinghy i'm about a third of the way through sanding the dinghy but um, for now the priority is to get florence a lot further forward than she is such a dusty yard this has just been left for a couple of days going to be really difficult to get a decent paint finish and um, but I just wanted to show you this is the paint that I got color matched to match our dinghy <laughs> so I've been back to the paint shop hopefully the next lot is going to be better well we got the paint onto Florence's blue stripes it's a two-pot epoxy paint that required both of us to work fast one to roll and one to tip with a paintbrush before it's set hard and then one of us to sand off half the boat back again after a two minute isolated shower halfway through painting destroyed the finish. Our hands were too full to film at this point. Now we have the easiest and most satisfying part, taking the tape off. It all took a lot longer than planned, but we were very pleased with the result. So we've got over the horror of having Osmosis on the rudder. We ground the blisters out as soon as we lifted out and left them to dry as long as possible. Um, and now just got to clean it up and fill them with epoxy. Couldn't get the epoxy that was recommended to use for them, but we found luckily one pot in a shop with stuff that is specifically for filling osmosis blisters under the water line. So fill them up and paint it again. Tested the epoxy here and it's actually gone off. It was in a closing down sale in a shop, so I didn't know if it was going to be any good. But we should have just enough to do the rest of it. Not just Florence that needs to sand and paint. Yeah, we're on to the next dirty job. 
uh, sanding the dinghy as you can see the paint has totally gone and uh, she's also covered in a green weed on the bottom so it's uh, the before <laughs> and this is the during we've got to sand her right back and then hopefully we can put on a couple of coats of paint which should last us a couple of years hopefully she gets a hard life our dinghy and she's got a few scars from all of her adventures these are a few kids who vandalized her in spain and then this was coming ashore at low tide when the water was murky in thailand but she's doing really well five years and still going strong thanks dad since we've got to disconnect the prop shaft in order to change the engine mounts i'm also going to replace the prop shaft seal you're supposed to do that every six years according to the data sheet and it's been five years it looks absolutely fine haven't had any problems so far but uh, if the prop shaft seal fails then you've got a big hole which will let a lot of the ocean into florence right so this is the new prop shaft seal it's the same as the old one but to fit this we need to disconnect the prop shaft from the gearbox and slide it out of the boat so that we can then thread the new seal on and push the prop shaft back in so this is the prop shaft here and this is the coupling onto the back of the engine a bit rusty i need to clean that up before i come out of here but let's see if this will Okay, these are good squirts. WD-40 the other day in preparation. I've already undone the uh, set screws that hold this rotor onto the shaft and the Jubilee clips that, that hold the old seal onto the, I don't know, hole that the prop shaft goes through, whatever that's called. So that all slides off. So once the prop shaft goes aft, we'll be okay. Sliding the prop shaft out is a two-person job, one inside and one outside. In fact, if you just pull out and stop it twisting, I'll twist at this end, yeah? Ready? Uh, nearly, nearly. Another centimetre. Yeah, it's good, I'm off. Before we could fully attach the new seal, we needed another mechanic to help us with the engine mounts and realignment. I don't have the tools required on board and there is nowhere to hire them here in Seychelles. So we have hired an engineer to do this for us, believing that an experienced engineer will ensure this important job is done better than I could do it. So that's a little bit concerning. The guys have uh, disappeared off to get another jack apparently. It was supposed to be a one and a half hour job, two hours max. They were here for about 10 minutes and now they're off again. Meanwhile, Amy was getting on with painting the hull. Painting the hull with over six coats of paint using a miniature roller is definitely one of the few rare times I have longed for a smaller boat. Unfortunately, the small rollers were the only ones that we could get that resist the chemicals of the antiviral paint. We hope to get past Southern Africa and all the way back into the Atlantic to the Caribbean before we have to haul out again. There is an antifoul shortage on the island and we were lucky to have bought this over a month ago. Even then, there was only one type available, in either navy blue or black. And at £68 a litre, it's the most expensive antifoul we've ever used. So it will be interesting to see how well it works and how long it lasts. Well, it's been a pretty tough few days in the yard. We have been working flat out. But one of the real problems we've had is changing the engine mounts. Uh, something which we were told we needed to do after an engineer came and checked it. We had a bit much vibration, so we had someone check it. Um, and I don't have the tools to do that all myself. And I also don't have the knowledge, I've never done it before, so I have no knowledge about realigning the engine to the prop shaft, which I hear is a critical thing. So we had hired an engineer to do it for us, and then he got ill and couldn't come. So we ended up having to hire another engineer uh, at a much greater expense being that we're kind of stuck and in the yard and need to get it sorted so we can go back in the water and bless them those guys they come to try and do it and they've struggled to change the mounts they ended up wrecking the old engine mounts to get them out so we couldn't see if there really was a problem with them or not um, but they've now fitted the new ones which we bought in and they've realigned the engine to the prop shaft but oh, i've just gone and measured the clearance between the side of the tunnel where the prop shaft goes through Florence's hull and the prop shaft itself and I can't even get a 0.2 millimeter feeler gauge 
in the gap. So there's basically hardly any gap whatsoever. So that's clearly not right. I don't know if you can see, but there's a big gap around this side of the prop shaft tunnel. This is the prop shaft. This is a tunnel that goes in through to the engine in Florence. And around the other side, there is no gap whatsoever. They are going to come back again tomorrow and try and rectify the problem. So they have been pretty good about it. They are going to come back and check it and we'll see how it goes tomorrow. But I, I'll be honest, uh, it's stressing me out at the moment. I'm pretty, pretty scared about that. Our, our, we're, our lives, our boat and our lives are in the hands of someone else, which we prefer it when it's all under our control. Other than that, time in the yard is, is never easy and this yard's been particularly difficult. Um, we were supposed to launch, it's now Wednesday evening, we're going to be all ready to launch uh, Friday morning, that was the plan. And then we've just been told that they've got to bring another boat out which is going to block access to where Florence is. So suddenly we can't haul out, uh, sorry, we can't launch on Friday anymore and we now have to wait until Tuesday. Um, yeah. It's just really frustrating. We're so used to being independent, having Florence stocked up with food, fuel, water, we can kind of go anywhere. Um, we're completely independent unit by ourselves. And being stuck, we're, we're like a fish out of water, aren't we? This is not our natural element, the boatyard. We have to do it every now and then. Yeah, don't like it here. And on top of all that, the travel lift, which is supposed to be lifting us in, was lifting this fishing boat in and got a flat tire which is actually the second time in two days that it's got the same flat tire so it takes them about a day to change it so there's no guarantees that we're going in anytime soon at all really if that's gone twice in a row luckily because the lift had that puncture the launching schedule was disrupted and a space appeared very early on friday morning for us to launch as initially planned after all we're always hard on ourselves during boatyard time we just want to get the work done and get out as soon as possible this means literally working until we drop every day and working through the night last night to get the last of the painting and polishing done ready to launch early this morning. We had all of the through hole fittings in pieces to maintain them. The first thing we have to do when we launch is to check that they're not leaking. It is a massive relief to be out of the yard and back in the water. I've been so stressed. I'm sorry. So what happened with those engine mounts? Well, what should have been a simple case of paying an engineer to come and change the mounts turned into a nightmare. After their first attempt, when I checked, I found that the prop shaft was almost contacting the hull, hardly any clearance whatsoever, and that the, some of the bolts holding the engine mounts down themselves were not done up. I could move them this much with my hands. So if we'd gone out to sea like that, we could have been in a world of trouble. And then we were in a race against time to get this problem fixed before we were due to launch Florence out of the yard, because we can't do this when we're in the water. So they came back and had a couple of other attempts and I had to end up ringing the UK to find out what they should be doing and how this job should be done so that I could supervise and so that I could make sure that we ended up with a safe and working engine and alignment at the end of it. We do now have that working and we motored out of the slings once we were launched with no problems and the vibration that we were seeing before which we believed was due to a broken engine mount was massively improved so we think we're good we're not a hundred percent certain about the alignment but everything seems to be working okay we're just gonna have to keep a very close eye on the wear in the P bracket and see if we get any problems there um, at the end of the day that we had so many other problems surrounding this as well there was a whole load of paint chipped off the engine from where they were trying to move it we've got damage to the woodwork from where from the end of a pry bar that they were using to, to lift the engine and we said to the engineering company uh, we did not think they'd done a good enough job for them to invoice us and they agreed and they didn't send us an invoice we'd rather fix the cosmetic problems ourselves rather than complain and have them come and fix them because we just want to get back out and get back sailing florence i guess the lesson here is that if you're sailing a boat around the world you need to be able to do everything on board yourself because you can't rely on finding experts to do things that you don't know how to do that just leaves one item that we didn't manage to get done in the yard replacing our battery bank 
Mike from Sustainable Power Solutions very kindly got into his boat and delivered 112 kilos of batteries out to Florence, where we were anchored. Well, it's a pretty momentous day here on Florence. After struggling with battery capacity or failing batteries for so long now, and some of you will know that when we were in Indonesia trying to leave Indonesia, we found out that not only was our engine battery dead, our house batteries weren't in very good condition either. And we had a lot of trouble on the passage across the Indian Ocean. We couldn't turn a lot of stuff on at night. We were down to just the GPS, all the fridge and everything else was turned off because the batteries just weren't holding charge. So finally here in Seychelles we've got some replacement batteries and these are Trojan T105 batteries. They are old school wet cell lead acid batteries. We would love to go lithium um, but here in Seychelles it's not really an easy option and we really need some new batteries right now and also the cost of going lithium or even AGMs or the more advanced batteries is way higher than these batteries which are uh, golf cart batteries and when we first arrived here we saw a lot of golf carts driving around the resorts and we thought great we should be able to get some batteries but even getting those has been pretty tricky um, it turned out there were no batteries for sale available for sale in the entire of Seychelles and we had to wait for a shipment to come in and luckily there was one already on the way and we managed to through a very kind man who sold us the batteries managed to book four of those batteries because they arrived and they were all already sold even before they arrived so we feel fortunate to have these and really excited to get these in and just stop having to keep such a careful eye on how much power we've got on board. So these are 6 volt batteries and they're 225 amp hours each but because we need to link them up into a 12 volt system that will give us a total of 450 amp hours in our battery bank and you can use about half of that but these are actually exactly the same as what we've already got because when we left England we were uh, trying to do things on a real shoestring budget and so this was the the best bang for your buck when we were only going to be four or five years and it would they would have got us all the way back to England but of course we've been longer so they've run out and needed replacing. Just making sure all the terminals are really clean. So this is where our batteries are at the bottom of the quarter berth normally there's like folding bikes and sail for the dinghy and this is basically our garage so everything on top of this. They're in battery boxes which are vented to the outside which is what you need for these uh, lead acid batteries because they do vent off gas when they're charging. Since this is a like for like swap it should be a simple job just to undo the wires and put the new ones in and reconnect the wires. When we do eventually go to lithium it's going to mean completely changing the whole charging system for the boat and we'll have to replace a lot more parts. And the bad thing about these things is they weigh 28 kilos each. It's a bit much nicer to have light lithium is better. These work, hopefully. Oh. Final connection. It's a bit sweaty in the quarter berth doing all of that, moving heavy weights around and I've connected them all up but my battery monitor is not reading anything. And that's just because I've forgotten to connect that one as well. So I'll go and do that. So these batteries are maybe half charged, so we now need to charge the batteries. So we'll plug in the solar panels and we might start the engine and use the engine alternator to give them a good charge to start with. It's been a really hard slog, not only to get the work done in the boatyard, but to also research what we needed to do, source the parts and get the things that we needed shipped in through customs. And that Periodic maintenance is always the most expensive part of our year, but this haul out has been particularly expensive. In total, for all of the parts and the haul out itself, we spent £4,150. But Florence is now in much better condition and ready to face our next challenge, sailing the stormy and notoriously difficult route from Seychelles to South Africa via the Mozambique Channel. Next time, we tackle the first section of the voyage south. From Seychelles to Mayotte, a small French African island at the top of the Mozambique Channel. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe and click the bell to get a notification when the next video is released. And let us know what you think of the video, we love reading all your comments. We would like to thank everyone who supports us, and especially our star patrons.